On SBS World News Australia, we're joined by Rick McPhee, the series producer for the upcoming documentary Go Back to Where You Came From, which features six prominent Australians experiencing the controversial journey of an asylum seeker arriving in Australia. Rick, thanks for joining us. Thank you. The first season of Go Back to Where You Came From had a ripple effect. There was a Twitter hashtag, Go Back, that was uh, trending worldwide. What's changed globally since the last time? I suppose the difference this time is uh, the stalemate has, well, there was the big big bust up just before um, the um, winter recess and put, given to the expert committee who have now come down with um, their recommendations, which the government and the opposition seem to be supporting. So there has been some sort of resolution to the deadlock, but I still think the issue is just as topical now as it was before. So how do you go about selecting the participants? This year there's a, a shock jock, a former immigration minister and an underwear model, and how do you convince them to do the show? In series two, the difference is that these people sort of get it. They know more about the issue, they're better informed. Um, so uh, the idea is that they sort of uh, have, um, we elevate the debate. We have um, more policy discussion in series two than we did in series one. Uh, so I needed people who uh, had strong opinions and I wanted, uh, in series one, I had one pro and five anti. In series three, uh, it's basically three, three. Imogen was a little bit of um, an undecided. She was probably less informed than the others, but I, we had strong people, um, strong opinions uh, for and against. So the idea was to find people who um, the public knew and would be interested in seeing how they responded to the events that they were um, about to experience. Peter Reith was pretty obvious because of his connection with the issue, not only as an architect of the Pacific Solution, but as Defence Minister, he ordered Special Forces onto Tampa, uh, and of course he was abroad in the Children Overboard Affair. So he was um, an obvious person to ask, and uh, I asked him, and uh, eventually he said yes. So what are the unique challenges of taking celebrities like these to places like Afghanistan? Uh, overwhelming safety is the, is the biggest issue. So trying to keep people safe, um, in two of the most dangerous cities in the world was, um, uh, was obviously uh, something that we took very seriously and spent a lot of time and effort um, uh, making sure it happened. Um, we had to do a very rigorous risk, ass risk assessment. Um, almost every single aspect of the journey was sort of analysed and worked out um, uh, what the risks were and then how we were going to mitigate those risks. Um, that was a very comprehensive document. Then we had security teams. Um, we had to employ security teams in both Afghanistan and Somalia to look after us. And yet, Peter Reith today in the paper criticised the security measures you put in place. How do you balance exposing the participants to reality while protecting them from risk? I think he has uh, every right to question the security and, uh, you know, it's, it's a big leap of faith, faith to sort of put your life in the hands of a production company, people you don't know. What happened two days before we arrived is the Americans had burnt some books from in Bagram Air Base, including some Korans, which um, the Afghans weren't happy about. In fact, there were gangs on the streets looking for people to kill. Um, and if they'd found us, that's probably what they may have done to us, if those gangs had found us. But in their, in their estimation, it was a reasonable risk to actually leave the compound. There were people out and about on the streets. Um, not everyone was in lockdown. Um, and um, so I took, the, I took their advice. This was the first time that cameras were allowed behind the fence in Christmas Island. Um, what do we get to see? What you get to see in Christmas Island is the three uh, participants who uh, went in talking to detainees, clients as, as the Department of Immigration and Citizenship call them. Um, we weren't allowed to identify them, so we have to blur their faces. But it's the first time uh, cameras are allowed in and where people are allowed to talk to um, the detainees. And not to give too much away, but there is a, a, a moment of fireworks between one participant and the former Immigration Minister, Peter Reith. Do you have to orchestrate those moments or do they come naturally? No. I mean, all through the series, there's um, a lot of, um, well, there's interesting and spirited conversations between Catherine Devon and Peter Reith because they travelled together, and Michael Smith and Imogen Bailey because they travelled together. When we came together in Indonesia, Imogen Bailey did ask, uh, confront Peter Reith about the children overboard. He thought it was a setup because it was uh, tw towards the end of the, uh, the journey. He thought that Catherine Devaney had set up um, Imogen to uh, confront him. Um, that wasn't the case, um, but they had a, a, an interesting conversation uh, about uh, children overboard. 
to, to some extent, you want the participants to come away with a, a different perspective. Ha, has that happened this time? Yeah, to different, to different extents. Uh, a few changed their minds about, about um, certain things, one more than, in, more than others. Um, they're all better informed as a result of um, uh, having spent three weeks in the, walking the shoes of, of refugees and asylum seekers. Um, and uh, some of them uh, changed their mind about different aspects of, of things. Well, the series starts. Go back to where you came from on the 28th of August on SBS One. Producer Rick McPhee, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Andy.